Hey everyone, I know it has been quite a while, but I am back with a meal prep video for you today. This one happens to be a low carb keto meal prep, but if you don't follow a ketogenic lifestyle, feel free to tailor this to the way you like to eat. So the way I like to meal prep is by prepping a bunch of simple, versatile ingredients that I can then make into a bunch of different types of meals because personally, I don't like eating the same thing over and over again. So here I'm just prepping a couple trays of bacon. I like to bake them in the oven because it's less mess and I can do a big batch at once. So I'm putting these in a cold oven and then I am putting the oven on at 375 degrees. I like doing it this way because the fat renders out and you get crispier bacon. Next, I am prepping a chicken, a whole chicken. So I am cutting a couple of whole bulbs of garlic along with some lemon slices that I'm going to then put inside the cavity of the chicken. First, I am salt and peppering the inside and just putting those things in there. You can put whatever you want inside. You could put some herbs in there or nothing at all. This is just how I like to flavor the inside of my chicken. I'm then flipping it over and I'm going to seize the entire outside of the bird um, to taste with salt and pepper. And then I'm going to truss the chicken, which is really simple. You just take some kitchen twine and you're gonna just tie the legs together and it just helps to um, cook everything more evenly. So you can see I'm just tying a knot around one of the legs and then I'm pulling both of them together and tying another knot. There's not really any rhyme or reason. You just do it however you want to do it. Honestly, it's just to help things cook evenly and you'll see in a minute that I'll also tuck the wings underneath the chicken once I get it in the roasting tray. And again, that's just so everything cooks evenly. The wing tips don't burn that way. Um, and you'll be able to see exactly the same process again once I do the other chicken. It probably goes without saying that you can prep any kind of protein you like. I chose to do chicken this week, but you could do ground beef, you could do steak, fish, um, chicken thighs, whatever you like. Uh, this is just a template and you can tailor it to whatever types of foods that you like to eat. The idea is just to, um, again, prep a bunch of simple ingredients that you can turn into a lot of different types of meals throughout the week. Everything's cooked and ready to go and you can put a meal together in five minutes, which really helps you to stay on track if you're trying to follow a certain way of eating. Um, there's a quote that I've used before, but it's, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. And I've just found that to ring true in my own life. If I have the food ready, I am more willing to eat it, um, especially if I'm running short on time and <laughs> hungry, so. Anyway, by the time we're prepping our second chicken and getting it into the roasting pan, we'll clean our station and our bacon should soon be done. So once you get your bacon out of the oven, you'll want to remove it to a paper towel lined plate to drain and make sure you keep the pans. Don't wash them yet because we're going to use the fat that's left in the tray for one of our next ingredients. So here I am getting the chickens in the oven. I'm cooking mine at 375 degrees until the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees. For me, I think it took about an hour and a half. So here I am um, prepping my next ingredient. I'm making some roasted Brussels sprouts. And the reason you didn't wanna wash the tray is I'm gonna use the leftover bacon fat to cook my sprouts in. So I'm just cutting the little tail ends off and cutting them in half. If they're really big, I'll cut them into quarters, but you get the idea. Just prep all of your Brussels sprouts and get them in your pan. To my Brussels sprouts, I'm adding some of the bacon I just cooked. I'm cutting it into bite-sized pieces and adding that to the pan because why not? Bacon tastes good and everything, so we're just gonna add some of it to here. Mm -hmm. 
To cut through some of the richness, I'm adding in a few tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, just drizzling it over the top. I really don't measure, but it's probably a couple of tablespoons. I'm also going to be adding some of this maple flavored allulose syrup. I found it at Kroger, so we will see how that turns out. If Again, if you're not following a ketogenic lifestyle or way of eating, you can just add regular maple syrup. Um, you could even do balsamic and honey. That would taste really good. Um, just make it how you like it. Of course, season it to taste with salt and pepper, but remember that the bacon is salty, so you probably won't need that much salt. And just uh, give her a good mix. Because I'm trying to keep things simple, I'm just popping the Brussels sprouts into the same oven that I'm cooking the chicken in. Just keep in mind that this may prolong the cooking time of both items, so just keep that in mind. And uh, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just putting my bacon into a glass lock jar. Um, I really like to use the glass ones because if you need to reheat something, you can just reheat it right in the jar and you don't have to worry about heating up plastics if you're worried about that. And uh, next up, we're going to be boiling some eggs. So I like to actually steam my boiled eggs in uh, about an inch of water. I find that they're way easier to peel this way. If you have ever raised chickens and had fresh eggs, you know that fresh eggs are a pain in the rear end to peel. So I found that steaming them really helps the shells to come off easier. Uh, while I'm waiting for those to cook, I'm just prepping some celery that I washed and putting it in a um, putting it in some foil and then you can see the tops and the tails I'm putting in a plastic bag that I'm then going to put in the freezer and save it for chicken stock. So once all my celery is cut up, I'm going to put my celery scraps in the freezer for stock. And I'm going to put the celery itself into some aluminum foil and just fold it up. Uh, I read somewhere that that's supposed to help it last longer, so in the fridge it goes. And after 10 to 12 minutes, your eggs should be done. You can see one exploded, but that's okay. So what I like to do is turn off the stove and then add a bunch of ice water to the pan to stop it cooking. So I just add it right to that pan and uh, let it sit for a couple minutes before I begin to peel them. Once your Brussels sprouts are cooked to your liking, you can take them out of the oven and let them cool. Of course, stealing a taste. I think mine probably took about 25 minutes because the oven was already hot. It didn't take long at all. So um, obviously just put them in your little container and we can move on to the next step. Another ingredient I like to prep ahead of time is lettuce. I just cut the core off of this romaine lettuce and am cutting it into bite-sized pieces and putting it right into my salad spinner. Um, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend. It makes prepping and washing and drying lettuce really easy. So I'm putting two heads of romaine into my salad spinner and then the third head of romaine I am just separating out each leaf because I plan to make lettuce wraps so those I'll be just washing individually and put those last couple of pieces in there and then I fill up the salad spinner with very cold water you could even put in a couple of ice cubes that'll help the lettuce leaves to crisp up a bit and then a little secret I learned when I was growing lettuce is that if you put in a teaspoon or two of apple cider vinegar or white vinegar, it helps any little critters that might be stuck on your lettuce to release off of it so that they can be rinsed away. If you've ever grown lettuce, you know that those little aphids do not just come off when you rinse it, so the vinegar really helps to get the lettuce nice and clean. Once the boiled eggs are cooled, go ahead and peel them. They should be relatively easy to peel since we steamed them and then gave them an ice bath. And what I like to do is just um, 
kind of crack the shell all over and then um, roll it against the countertop and it seems to help the shell to release and make them a little bit easier to peel. If you're using really fresh eggs, they may be difficult to peel anyway, but any little bit helps, right? So get those peeled and put them in your container in the fridge and we'll move on to the next step. After the lettuce has been soaking for a few minutes, obviously just take it out of the water bath and rinse it really well under some cold water. Then I'll just uh, dump the water out of the bottom of the salad spinner, rinse that out, and dry the lettuce. If you don't have a salad spinner, you can obviously just dry your lettuce in a kitchen towel. And what I like to do after drying it is um, take a piece of dry paper towel and lay it on top of the lettuce and I'll store it right in the salad spinner and that seems to keep it fresh all week. For the whole leaves, I just dry them on the kitchen towel and store them in a Ziploc bag with a piece of paper towel and keep them in the fridge like that. Of course, during the week, you may want something sweet, so we'll be adding that into our meal prep. Here, I am just melting down some Lily's chocolate chips over a double boiler. And I'm going to be making some chocolate covered macadamia nuts. So here I have a couple ounces of macadamia nuts. I'm just using what I had. So you could do almonds, walnuts, pecans would be great. Use whatever you have. I thought um, since we're going with macadamia nuts that uh, some unsweetened coconut shreds would taste good in there. So I added whatever I had left of those. And once the chocolate is almost totally melted, I'm going to stir it up and add it into our nut and coconut mixture. Once everything is thoroughly mixed, I'm just going to spread it out the best I can on a parchment lined baking sheet. Uh, and then I will sprinkle on some flaky sea salt and pop it in the freezer for a few minutes. By this time, the chickens are cooked and cool enough to start breaking down. So here I'm just removing the twine that I used to truss it, and I'm just going to break the chicken down the best I can into its individual parts. So I start by um, removing each breast. I like to keep the chicken breasts whole so that they don't dry out too much uh, because we will be reheating them throughout the week. So I just cut the whole thing off and put it right into my container, um, removing the wing as well and the drumette. And again, just breaking those down and putting them in the container as well. And when I'm removing the chicken breast, I just try to keep the knife as close to the bone as possible so that I don't um, waste any of that meat. Of course, I'll take off whatever's left over for like chicken salad or something, but you just wanna get as much as you can off of there. Again, just removing another wing, and then I will 
try to remove the drum and the thigh and separate those. And uh, yeah, I'm not really that great at this, but you know, you just do the best you can. So yeah. Once you're done breaking down your chickens, your chocolate should be hardened and ready to break up. So I'm just breaking off different sized pieces and putting them in my container. And those will make for a nice sugar-free chocolate treat during the week. So here are some of the meals that I might make with the ingredients that I prepped this week. Um, here I have a salad, you could do chicken salad in a lettuce wrap like I have here or um, just a plate with the roasted chicken and Brussels sprouts and of course we have our sweet treat. Um, so there it is guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.